uh, what a blessed time we're having so far and such an honor to witness our kids their talents and all the hard work they put for you know for the Lord's work and um, we have to take great joy in this more than when they get good grades or all that's necessary but when they do something for God and sweat for that it creates much more joy it should create much more joy in our hearts because that's what amounts at the end you know no matter what they do otherwise it doesn't amount to much so we have to spend time when they see and when they don't see crying for them so I praise God for all their talents and may God continue to bless you and let's get to my task assigned to me um, I'm gonna pray it's open oh Lord Jesus thank you oh God for this time that you've uh, set apart for, for us, O oh Lord, to display our talents for your glory, O oh Lord Jesus. Help us to soak up your word, O oh God, and um, learn from it, O oh Lord Jesus, and live by it. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so what theme, the kids can answer, this is interactive a little bit. So what theme do we see today in our anniversary we try to depict? What do we see behind us? Yes, Jasmine. Baby Jesus, yes, what? So what are we celebrating? Christmas. Christmas, yes, Andrew? Christmas, you're right. So Christmas is what we're celebrating in a couple of days, right? In a few days. So when we think of Christmas, what comes to our mind first? Yes, Liana? Jesus being born, right? See, we see Jesus' birth there. So... And what, but what is so significant about this miracle? We see so many miracles in the Bible, great miracles that's, you know, so encouraging for us. But what is so, what sets this miracle apart for us? Anybody? Jasmine knows all the answers. Yes, Jerry, I see. Yes, our Savior is born. You're right, absolutely right. So we hear and we saw in the last performance all these words of hope, love, joy, peace all floating around and we, have, we see it in the stores, we even have it in our home, in our living room, hope, love, joy, peace. So from this very miracle itself, do we get all those things? I don't know. In just the very birth of Jesus, do we get all those things? I don't know. If I was living during those times, I don't think I would be very hopeful in Jesus' birth because I don't know who this baby is. Baby brought so much chaos into that time, you know, into Mary and Joseph's life, brought so much chaos. They had to hide their secret and they had to run away from family and people trying to kill all the baby boys in that region. They had to run away from that. So people were living in that chaotic time when this baby is born. But who is this baby? What does this baby do for us? So. But what, where do you think, what, so where did this, the words hope, love, joy, and all that come from when we associate that with Christmas? Because of what did Jesus do? Yes? Jesus died on the cross. So it's not just the very fact that he was born. That is awesome, right? The beginning of Jesus is awesome, but the, his, how he lived his life and how he died on the cross for us took our sins with him, right, buried it, and then resurrected. So the whole package is what makes love, joy, and peace come into this package of Christmas. So the same way, when Jesus does a miracle, so Jesus' birth is just an opening. It's a miracle opening the door to many things ahead for mankind, right? Mankind took a whole new turn at that point with Jesus' birth. It gave us a whole new hope of a whole new hope of salvation. We didn't have to do all those sacrificing lambs and all that stuff to come to God. It gave us a whole new perspective on hope. So the same way, when God does a miracle in our lives, it's just an opening. It's not a wowing moment for us. Oh, thank you, God. You did something so cool. Thank you. And end of story. No, it's, just, it's a beginning of many more things to come when he does miracles. I remember miracles happening in my life when I'm a kid, older, you know, things that I can't, beyond my control, things I could not have done possibly with my own life. So, so we see Jesus' life, sacrificial life that he lived, right? Hum, sacrificing his life for us. So, and also, 
so not just Jesus, who else sacrificed? I know two people who sacrificed their lives for Christmas, for Christmas to happen, for Jesus' birth to happen. Who was that? Who was that with Jesus? Joseph and Mary, right? So what did they do? They're a young couple. I remember when I'm trying to, when I was going to get married, we have these big hopes, personal hopes. We have family hopes, goals as a, you know, dreams of, oh, we're going to do this, that, all these things. But these two couples, in a matter of minutes, their whole life changed, took a 180 degree turn, right? So, and did they say, oh, no, angels, you got to come back. Give me a week, give me a month. I got to think about this. I got to talk to Joseph. If I was married, I'd be like, I need to talk to Joseph. I need to figure this out. How are we going to plan this whole thing out? No, but what happened? The angels talked to the angels talked to Mary and Joseph separately, and they said yes, right? On their own. So do you think if they weren't close to God, if their whole life wasn't in preparation for being close to God, you think they would have said yes? I don't think so. If I was just coming to church on Sundays and just doing my thing, you think I would have had that heart to say yes to God in that one second? No, I don't think so. So they had... They were always ready and close to God, right? And the same way, so what happened? So they had, it, it's a, it doesn't happen overnight. It's an everyday learning process. So something that they had to train their lives for. So we are all here in a training process. So it doesn't mean that when things come our way, we're all trained and fully trained to go soldiers. But no, we train ourselves on the go. And uh, so even in a secular world, we see how these famous people, we see athletes, we see these doctors who have like big names, you know, or missionaries who have accomplished big, big things, orphanages. You think they could have done that all overnight? No, it happens with rigorous sacrifice and training and a lot of commitment to all these things, right? So what do athletes give up? They give up free time, they give up time away from family, they do training, they're constantly on the go and they have to be, that's how they get to where they are. We see just a glimpse of them on TV for like two minutes, five minutes, an hour, right? Same way doctors or missionaries, they are uprooted away from their family for hours at a time and they, they dedicate their lives, so this is how it is. So that's how we see a glimpse of Mary and Joseph. We think, oh wow, they're such courageous people, they're bold, they say yes, to God and that's it, you know? So, same way, following Jesus is not a comfortable thing. It's, it requires a lot of giving up, a lot of things don't go our way, you know, I know. Um, and, but one thing, when we have faith, that enough faith and trust, we know if God asks us to give up something good in our lives, it's for something better He has in store for us. But that comes with faith and trust. We need to know God has something better for us. And if you look in chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, when you get time, you'll see a whole list of all the big famous characters from the Old Testament. It lists Abraham, Moses, Noah, all these people. And it gives a little line of what their sacrifice is. And they call that chapter is the chapter of faith. It calls them heroes of faith. So it lists what their sacrifice is. But did they all do that sacrifice from just, from just that being bold and one day waking up and saying, you know what, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I can build a boat. I can build, build a big ark. I can, you know, um, cross the Red Sea. I can sacrifice my son on top of a mountain that goes for Abraham. You know, all these things comes with a lifetime of preparation. It's not just doesn't happen overnight. So I'm, so what... I wanted us to take away is how do we prepare our life or how do we do this training in our life and take away this kind of mentality, sacrificial life, lifestyle we have to adapt. So a few of the pointers we'll discuss and we're going to end. Point one is an eternal perspective. So these kind of people, when we faced with sacrifices, we have to have an eternal perspective. It doesn't happen, we don't think of like a momentary benefit. Oh, does this benefit me for the moment? No, I'm just going to pass. God, that's it. You know, like that's what people now have a microwave mentality. They think, press it and they want instant results. If not, they say, no, that's not for me. I can't wait for 20 years, 15 years, that's too long. One month, it's too long. I need results now. 
If not, that's not for me. Point number two is they depend on God. They have this dependence. When people live a sacrificial life, they constantly depend on God for their next decision. It could be big or small. It's like Abraham, when he was leaving, um, taking his people out of Egypt, he prayed to God, how do I do this? I have to take thousands of people, go to Pharaoh, and ask him to let go of people. How do I ask for that? You know, That's a big decision. And then once he got his people out, he had to ask God for his next meal. God provide, you have to provide their next meal. You know, small decisions, big decisions, all had to depend on God. So this is, I, I read this line somewhere, it said, not everyone who prays depends on God, but everyone who depends on God prays and often. So that means just because anyone can pray, you know, we can have a person from outside, any of us can pray for whatever we want, but doesn't mean we depend on God for his answer. We are still going to pray and then do our thing anyway, you know, but a person who depends on God, if God doesn't give an answer, they don't know what to do next. So they depend on God for his every answer and direction. Point three is they love God's word. That means they surround themselves with, they love to read it, they love to learn it, they love to listen to it. When people talk about it, they don't run away saying, oh, this is too much God stuff. I'm going to run away from this stuff. No, they, and more than even just listening or loving to hear it, they learn to live by it. You know, it's not just they walk the talk. And it says in Romans, I believe chapter 10, faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's another way of training ourselves. Because if we don't, hearing the word of God and faith goes hand in hand. If one is not there, then the faith just dwindles out from our lives. Point four is courage. True courage is not the absence of fear, but boldly doing what God wants even when we're afraid. So that means just because it's not a character, it's not a trait that someone's born with. Oh, he looks really loud in... He looks very strong. He's a very courageous person. No. Just because that person could be loud doesn't mean he doesn't, you know, he's going to not work on the fear. But so, but a mild, maybe, you know, a shy person, maybe they're more bolder and more courageous than the louder person. It's like, for example, for example, Peter, you know, three days before Jesus was crucified, what happened? He betrayed Jesus, right? What happened? What did Peter do? Yes, Leila. He betrayed Jesus. But what happened a few days after that? He boldly preached the gospel to thousands of people. What happened? It's the same guy, right? But what happened? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. That was the difference. So being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead you and make you bold. Then the next one is endurance. People who live a sacrificial life, they don't give up when the going gets tough. They continue on and on. And they know that God has given them a vision and no matter what, He will fulfill it. Whether they are tired and weary or they don't think they can keep going on, they will, keep, they will just continue on till God fulfills His promise. For example, Abraham didn't give up. He had to wait hundreds, I mean, tens and ten, decades of years for waiting for a son, Isaac. Moses through 40 years in the desert. It took him so long, but he didn't give up. I'm sure he came so close to being weary and surrounded by mumbling people. And, you know, he was the only one with a vision in his eyes. So then he just kept looking at the vision of God and just kept going. The next one, there's just three more. Obedience, not making excuses or using the, your weakness as a means of running away from God's calling. So, for example, Abraham had to sacrifice Isaac. So if he was not obedient, what would he have done? He said, God, you made me wait for all these years. You give me a son. You promised me generations as many as the stars, and you give me a son. And now what do you say? You're going to take me to the mountain and kill him? I, you know, I must have heard you wrong. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm done. I, I can't do this. He could have done it, but why did he do it? Just because God said so. Don't we tell our kids when they say, why, 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 why do I have to do that? Just because I said so. That's it. So Abraham blindly just trusted God saying, I know you have something better. And if you promise me generations as much as the stars, you will do it. Even if you take Isaac from me. 
The, se the seventh point is self-control. We have to control our flesh, which means not using our words to hurt others. People who have maybe hurt us, we want to say things that's in our heart, we want to just spit it out, but then we control our temper. And because knowing that what God, what God has uh, do, to do what's right in God's eyes and not what's going to please us in that moment, you know, what's going to make us feel good in that moment. So we have to learn to self-control ourselves. We can't just live the way we feel like living. And the last but not the least is love. And the Bible talks about love as, as not an emotion but a choice. So it's like the world teaches us, oh, you love them. If they do something nice to you, you love them back. Or if they're kind to you or if they're friendly to you, you love them back. You be nice to them. But that's not what the Bible teaches. You be, you love them despite what they do to you. It's a choice you make. And sometimes maybe the person you're trying to love doesn't deserve it. That's true. They don't deserve it, but you show God's love through you. You have to just trust God knows and God sees. And for example, when Jesus was about to be crucified, handed over to the Romans, what happened? Ju he was sitting and breaking bread with Judas. But, and he even washed Judas' feet. You think that would have been easy if he was, if it was me? No, I would have said, oh my God, you're going to hand me over to the authorities? I'm done. Run away from him. Escape from him, you know? But Jesus humbled himself enough and loved him enough to wash his feet, get down on his knees and wash Judas' feet, and knowing that he would betray him in a few minutes. And uh, there's this verse, 1 John 4, verses 12. It says, no one has seen God at any time. But if we love one another, God abides in us. So it says, what does that mean? That none of us have seen God, have we? But the way we love God is by loving each other. So if we love each other, we show each other kindness and mercy, that is how we know. And we see God's love and we know God lives in that person. You know? Um... And his love has been perfected in us. So now when we think of Christmas, what do we think about? Not just Jesus' birth, but all the sacrifice that went behind making this day happen, right? God had to sacrifice his only son and Mary and Joseph, their sacrificial attitude and life. And if not for that, we would not have the saving grace and we would not be living in this love, joyous and peaceful life and hopeful life that we have in store for us. So I hope this word blessed you guys and um, may us all, may we all continue to live a joyous life, a hopeful life and love one another. Amen. Good job Sharon, it's better than C, all right? Next, I'm gonna call up Susan as we come to a close soon with the prize distribution.